What makes this bath bomb different than the rest? Keep watching and find out. Hi, I'm Sherry, and this is Buddy, the top dog of Lucky Dog Creations. Hello friends, today I'm going to attempt to try making embeds again. The last time I made the embeds, they turned out fine. They were hard enough. The only problem was that the color was not dark enough to give them the pop that they need. Now embeds are little pieces of let's say bath bombs um, that you put inside your bath bomb so when your bath bomb goes into the water and starts to fizz it hits the embed and comes a burst of color so I was looking on the YouTube internet whatever I wanted to find an embed that would work I come across frugal bears recipe thank you so much for that you need to go check that video out and it kind of intimidated me because it uses grams instead of cups but anything's worth a shot so let's get started shall we okay so I have my scale here so I'm going to measure it here and then I will dump it into the bowl to mix and first off you're gonna need 200 grams of baking soda And I have my scale zeroed out so it's not measuring the bowl, it's just measuring the baking soda. I tried to do the conversion so I wouldn't have to do this, but it didn't work so this actually will be okay. Okay, a little bit too much. I want to be precise. If you're, if you're precise, then it turns out better. That's one thing with cups, you know, you have an overfill cup or an underfill cup and you don't have exact. With measurements, you will have it exact. Okay, I have 200 grams of baking soda. And I'm going to do 200 grams. I better dump that in there. Get that set back to zero. And 200 grams of citric acid. You want to do a one to one ratio. So if you don't want to use this big of a recipe, you know, you can cut it down to half, but just make sure it's one to one of baking soda and citric acid, which is a little bit different than bath bomb recipe. That was a lot easier than the other one. And then I'll dump that in there. Reset that. And I'm going to go ahead and give that a little bit of a stir. Mix it up, get the clumps out. Now this uh, embeds, they have to dry they dry quick and they dry really hard but you want to make sure that they're fully hard so you want to let them dry 24 to 48 hours so this is going to be a two to three day job depending on how hard the embeds get but I'm going to go ahead and do the um, embeds and then show you how to put them in the bath bombs and then show you the finished product okay so Next, I'm going to use 30 grams of cream of tartar. I wish I had a bigger one, but I haven't bought a bigger one yet. I reset my scale. And this little small jar, I think, will almost do two batches of, uh, well, not quite, two batches of of the embeds, but it didn't quite work. That's why I brought the second one out. I 
And what's nice, I mean, if you do them separately like that, if you get too much, you can always pull it out so you have the exact amount. Some people just keep adding the stuff because they know 200 plus 200 is 400. I don't like to do that because if I'm off, I can't take it out because it might mix when you put them back in. Oops, and I see it's 31. I, it was 30. But we'll just take a little bit out. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not. So it's anyway, it's 30 grams of cream of tartar. Put that in. Set my bowl aside. And give it a stir. Now the last time I used little tiny containers of the mica powder that came from China and they were not deep enough color. I don't think I could have used enough to make it deep. So I bought some more expensive ones. Um, these ones, see it, it's called Hawaiian Blue. It is jewel scent, very gorgeous color. Only thing I hate about that, it is kind of messy. And we'll put some of that in. And you can put as much as you want in there. The more you put in, the deeper the color. I'm going to put a teaspoon in. This is a half a teaspoon, so I'll put two of these in just to make it deep so I don't want to fail like I did last time with it not being dark enough. And mix that up. And you want to make sure it's fully incorporated. Some people use their hands. If you do, you might want to use gloves. They'll get all over your hands like this. It does wash off. It doesn't stain. And I'll get this all mixed up and then I will be back. Okay, so it's a very pretty blue color. When you add the alcohol to it, it will pop a little bit. So even like it is now, it is a lot darker color than the ones I tried last time. Okay, so now for the wet ingredients. I've got my scale set to zero with my little uh, measuring glass. And you're going to take five grams of polysorbate 80. And what this does, it helps the color disperse in the water so it doesn't float to the edge of your tub. It doesn't stain, but you're going to have to wipe your tub out after your, your bath because it's just hanging out at, at the sides of the tub. So this helps disperse it, and that's uh, always a plus. And you need five grams of that, and it doesn't take too much to do that. And this, I don't think, has to be as exact as the dry ingredients. Because I'm going to add this. Okay, i got five grams. I'm going to add this and the glycerin together and the alcohol. So um, then you're going to take five grams of glycerin and put it in there. So that should equal 10 grams all together. And you can't take these back anyway, so you just kind of want to be pretty careful. Okay. And then 91% rubbing alcohol. Now you can add 3 to 5 grams of alcohol into the mix. And then we will, to get it... Um, spruced uh, up with the color popping and to get it the consistency we want we will be spritzing with a with a bottle with that but for right now we'll add three to five grams of alcohol so we will try Now 
and I went ahead and split the difference and did four grams. So then you want to go ahead and move this out of the way because I don't need that anymore. And then you'll go ahead and just dump this in there and mix it up. Now the glycerin makes it clump. So you want to make sure that you get all of the clumps out. because you want a nice smooth embed and already you can tell it's getting a little bit darker just from adding what we have added which is awesome Buddy is getting really excited he's just running from one end of the house to the other I don't know what that's all about so that's the noise you hear he gets pretty wild any other time when I'm not uh, videotaping he is just laying on the couch being chill but not today now you don't have to add any essential oil because these are just going into the bath bombs for the pop of color and um, you don't need extra scents I suppose you could once it hits the um, the the water maybe it would give it a burst of scent too I don't know I've never tried it but you have this uh, essential oil in your bath bomb so that's probably plenty okay so look at how much darker that it has gotten and I think I got most of the clumps out I may take my little cheapy disposable glove here and make sure it is mixed all the way through and of course it's not close to being ready to mold now these don't have to be quite as wet as the bath bomb so I would say damp sand versus wet sand so it's not going to be too many spritz to get to where we want so you can just spritz it in and mix it up And I probably should have a little bit better forming, fit forming glove because it's fallen off. But spritz and mix. Some people use hand mixers, but you know, you can just get in there with your hand yourself and then you can kind of feel whether it's ready or not. And it is pretty close. And the more you spritz the alcohol, the deeper the color pops. So I think these ones are going to be very pretty. And I'm going to make white bath bombs because that will make the pop a little bit better. You'll notice it more than if you had a color bath bomb. And I want to do two more spritz and then I think that will be good enough. Okay, like I said, it does, it's not quite as, as uh, firm as wet sand, but it's pretty close. So we'll go ahead and get these molded, and I'll show you how we do that, and I'll be right back. And you can mold these several different ways. You can use um, small ice cube trays. You can use silicone molds like the little heart-shaped ones. You can use... Um, measuring spoons a lot of different ways whatever you want to they don't have to be pretty because you're not going to see them they're going to be inside the bath bomb and when they come out with a burst of color they're just going to be you know a burst of color there won't be any shape to them by then so I have this little ice cube tray and you want to just pack it down in there and it's a lot easier to do without gloves but if you don't want to get your hands colored go ahead feel free to use your gloves like I said they don't stain your hand so if you don't mind getting them messy 
for a little bit, that's fine. And you just pack them down. This may not be wet enough. It's not doing exactly what I wanted to do, but we'll see. The alcohol does dry really, really quick. And that may be what I might have waited a little bit too long. I might have to add more alcohol. Try to get all the little holes filled. I myself, you know, I like to do the teaspoon ones because they just are a little bit quicker, I think. Okay, so they're packed down, and then all you need to do is just flip them over and lift. And they don't always want to come out. Now they're very, very soft right now, so some of them are going to break, like these. But after they, they um, dry, they will... Um, be rock hard. So that's how you do that one. But like I said, my favorite one is I just take, this is a fourth of a teaspoon. De depending on the size of your bath bomb as to what size um, embed you want. Small bath bombs you'll want small embeds. And you just flip that over like that. Quicker and easier to my notion than the ice cube trays, but it's whatever you want to do, whatever you like. Easy peasy. Whoops, that one kind of fell apart. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish making that. I'll show you the rest of the um, embeds when they're all done. And then in the next day or two, we will continue this. Okay, so it did make several embeds. And they are a very pretty color right now. I am hoping that it is enough to give it the pop it needs when it hits the water. Um, before you let them harden, you want to spritz them with alcohol. I'm not sure why, but I will do what I'm told. And there's a lot of them, as you can see, that broke. And that's to be expected. They're very fragile when they first come out, but they will harden fairly quickly. So just plan for that when you're making them, that there will be some that break. And I will see you back in a day or two to finish this up. Okay, so it's 24 hours later and my embeds are not rock hard yet. So I decided to do what I do with my bath bombs to help speed up the drying process and I put them in the refrigerator for an hour. And here they are and they feel pretty hard. So we'll go ahead and um, check this out and see how well they work. I've got them all mixed up. It's white, that's why I didn't do it in a, in a glass bowl because you're not going to be able to see anything much anyway. But it is a consistency of wet sand. So we'll go ahead and get started in filling these bath bombs. So you have to go ahead and take a half of the bath bomb, put it in and pack it down. and then put whatever size embed that you want. I'm going to go ahead and put a bigger one in and just stick it down like that. And then go ahead and finish filling that up. Pack it down and add a little bit on the top so I can adhere it to the other side. And pack it down and I'm going to go ahead and put an embed on the other side so that should give it a little bit more pop of a color. These are actually very pretty 
so I'm hoping that they're going to work. And you can put more than one of them in there, or you can put different colors in there to get different colors of pop. I did make some yellow ones the other day, so I haven't tried them yet. But maybe I'll grab them and we'll do one of them that way too. So we'll just stick one of those in there, and we'll do one of the little tiny square ones and stick that in there. And cover that up. and push them together. And we have a perfectly formed bath. Okay, here are some of the yellow ones that I made the other day. They're pretty bright too, so we will see if we can get any yellow burst of color as well. And we'll stick a yellow one down in the center like this. Kind of looks like an egg, doesn't it? and fill that up. And add a little bit more on top to this one and put them together. Yeah, I have a little bit left, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I have enough to do a starfish one. And I think it would be really cool to have a burst of color in each of his little legs. So I'm going to go ahead and put five blue ones right there and finish filling it out. I'm hoping I have enough to do this. And it looks like I'm going to. So I'll go ahead and let these dry for two hours and then we'll be back to see the final result. I just wanted to mention that when you uh, dry the embeds after they're rock hard, you'll want to go ahead and put them in an airtight container to keep them fresh and usable, keep the moisture out, and then they'll be ready whenever you are ready to put in an embed in one of your bath bombs. Okay, we are back after two hours to see the final result. Are you ready? Now this guy here, he's my starfish. Unfortunately he broke a little bit when I was trying to move him into the refrigerator to, to finish up drying. But that's not going to stop you know the embeds from popping if they're going to pop. Now if you remember we ended up putting a small embed in each of his arms. They're all blue so let's see how it turns out. Oh wow look at that blue. That is turning out much better than the last one I did. More vibrant a lot more color. I'm very impressed. And as it continues to bubble, more blue is popping up. Each time it hits one of those embeds, you see a little dark spark of blue there. And we talked about the polysorbate with the mica powder. As you can see, the colors in the middle and in the water, it's not clinging to the side. So that is a, a very good thing to have in your bath water, is to not have it cling to the side. So when you drain your water, it just goes down the drain and not having to clean off the sides of the tub. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean the bowl and we will try the other one. I do believe it's going to be the one with one yellow and one blue in it. Let's see if we can be able to see both colors in that. Okay so the bath bomb itself turned out really nice. Not very colorful because I did not add any colorant because I wanted the colors to pop when it hit the embed. So let's see how this one turns out.
not seeing any color yet. Well, now I'm seeing a little bit of blue. So the yellow did not turn out very good at all. I can see a little bit of yellow right here. So it must just be now hitting the embed. Here is the blue. So the yellow is doing better than I thought. It just must have been farther down in the bath bomb. And look at this. This is interesting. Half yellow, half blue. It must be the way the, the bath bomb is sitting. That's really interesting. Deeper yellow right there. And now they're kind of mixing together yellow and the blue. So all in all, this is a lot better than the other video that I did with embeds. I am impressed with the recipe. I will probably continue to use this recipe versus the other recipe. Um, the only thing I've noticed that was a major difference maybe not even a major difference but the drying time of the embeds takes a little bit longer and I'm assuming that is because of the difference in the ingredients but if you know that and have time to plan for it to dry longer then you know this is definitely the way to go I am very impressed so if you like this video and if you've learned something I know I have Please hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications of my future videos. Thumbs up, thumbs downs, comments and suggestions are welcome. And I'll see you next time.